Okay. So, okay, let's continue now. Uh, our friend Urs König from Switzerland <laughs> come here uh, to show us some of his, uh, some parts of his collection. And I guess for any collector, and not only for collectors, it will be very interesting. So, now it's your turn, Urs. Thank you, Thomas. Hi, everybody. <laughs> I, I came a long way from Switzerland uh, yesterday afternoon with the airplane, first time in Cambridge. For a few years, not have been in the UK, so it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, my session is the Sinclair story, so uh, this is something you could not win, so it's an endless story, so I pick up just elements out of it. Uh, a few words about me. I'm a Sinclair addict and running the SinclairQL.net uh, website. And I'm also running for more than 10 years a YouTube channel called QL vs. Jaguar. <laughs> and uh, some reasons behind. So uh, next year I will turn 50, so I'm almost the same age as the Oliver Twins. And I grew up with Sinclair home computers and Atari video games in the 80s. And uh, I continued in a strict way. So for computing, it was Sinclair and then PCs. And for gaming, it was Atari up to the Jaguar, which was then end of the road. And so those two childhood memories became a hobby after uh, a few years. And uh, that's why I'm running those sites. Okay, to tell the Sinclair story today, I have no slides, no single PowerPoint, maybe one or two photographs, the rest is live. Never did this before like that. All I have with me is this ancient briefcase. <laughs> and this is not a fake. I have this since more than 30 years in exactly with those stickers. Those were original retail stickers. I put them on, and they, this briefcase came with me through my whole IT career. Nowadays, I don't use it anymore, but for the retro computing stuff. It's quite heavy. It's about eight kilograms, <laughs> and it has papers inside and uh, Sinclair artifacts. open the briefcase and this is the presentation for the next few minutes. I don't know how long it will take. <laughs> In addition, on the table I have uh, some bubble uh, plastic. Uh, this is a Sinclair computer. This also most likely is a Sinclair computer. <laughs> and this is a third one. Yesterday at check-in they asked, do you have computers with you? Hmm? I said yes, and I, I should not have told that much because it was a huge security check because some of the stuff here has lithium batteries in it, so it was not that easy, but I have here everything and uh, all good. Okay, let's start. About the Sinclair story, I better uh, give you a hint. So you should read some books, then you know everything. That's the good book, The Sinclair Story by Rodney Dale. Rodney Dale is a friend of Sir Clive Sinclair. He was with him for, since the beginning. And the book was uh, written, I think, 1985, published the same year or the year later, and gives you a good view how it was, the Sinclair story was viewed at that time, of, at that time, mid-80s. Today, you would write it differently. There is a, another book called Sinclair and the... Uh, Sunrise Technology, published a few months later, much more critical. You see that the authors were not good friends of uh, Sir Clive, but uh, from the journalistic point of view, also a very good read. You should go through it and uh, make your mind about the information you get out of those two books. Then there is a, a book about, with the Sinclair story which doesn't look like it has a story in it. It's called uh, Sinclair Database, and it has two chapters. One is about uh, Sinclair products, a catalog of games and peripherals, 
But the second part of the book is very interesting. It's really the Sinclair story written by the authors. And you should have those three stories in your mind and then get the truth out of it. It's not that easy. And uh, the database book was even translated to German. My mother tongue is uh, Swiss German. And uh, it's exactly the same book translated to our language. So, the last book you should uh, read, <laughs> especially when you're interested in the Sinclair QL, is uh, the Sinclair User Annual, 1985. It has a large chapter about the QL, the QL story. But it's the early day stories until the, the first heating problems and introduction in the UK market. So all what's there, I will not tell you right now. So, but I will use the artifacts and the screwdriver. And a webcam <laughs> to tell you some stories. So this bunch of paper is from my personal collection. Most of those papers I do only own for two to three years. There was a, a sad moment was the input for this. A, a UK-based collector, Enrico Tedeschi, located in Brighton, died. And his family member, his son, his daughter, his wife, were selling off the collection. He was running a museum in Brighton. I never, never visited that museum. I had some email contact with him and later on also with uh, his family members and was able to buy for a, for a uh, high amount of money several goods of that collection, including uh, some paperworks. And uh, I tried to start the Sinclair story with, uh, I take it out of the, the plastic. There were really original documents, like the balance sheet as at April 30th, 1970s of Sinclair Rantionix. So very unique papers, sometimes photocopies, but I believe even those are the single copy existing on Earth. And you see, compared to today's bookkeeping, how simple the whole thing was. On one piece of paper, you had the whole balance sheet of a company. I will, need, I will not show every single paper, otherwise it's uh, 8 o'clock in the evening, but also some handwritten memos, like to Clive from Rodney, that is the author of the book. The thing continues like that. I will just, from the early days, show some more to show you how simple compared to, you know, Apple launched the iPhone 8 and X, and when they do a production planning with China and Taiwan, this might be a very complex story. At Sinclair, that, would have, that has been much more easier. There was just one piece of paper with the months and the models and how many to be produced, I think in thousands. Like three means of the model executive, 3,000 in that month. Very simple organization. It was a small company, even at that point, uh, only a few dozens of employees. So from the early days, I have about 50 papers, which I, and that's the good thing for you, I really plan to scan them and to produce a PDF, a searchable PDF, and put on my website. I already have quite a few Unique Sinclair papers on my website, mainly from the computing age, like the employee dictionary with photographs and employee stories. But it will uh, continue with that one. Problem is only a little bit of time. The good point is I bought a new uh, all-in-one HP machine, which is scanner and color laser printer, which has an automatic document folder and can have double-side scans. So this makes things more easy. 
Okay, next is about, uh, let's enter the computing stage. Okay, no, go back, I forgot. Calculators, even you have nice calculators here in the museum. I bought one also from Tedeschi family, which is uh, the Sinclair Cambridge memory. I brought this one with me because the name matches perfect to our location. And when you take it out, that, that's the point I wanted to give you today. That's why with the camera, this is really a beauty. I tried a minute ago, it's supposed not to work. I ent uh, entered brand new batteries and you see made in England, not even made in the UK. Early Sinclair products were really proud of, of the land where they were, have been produced. And uh, even it's not working, and it's fully made of plastic. When you open it, I think it's, you know, it's uh, 40 plus years old and it, it's pristine co uh, condition. And uh, this one has been designed in the early uh, days, Sinclair Radionics, but when you compare it, for example, to an Apple product, and for me this is, each Apple product la uh, launch is like a comedy because it's a deja vu. We have, or have already seen this decades before when Sir Clive was standing in front of the crowd. And even the measurements and the roundings. I have to do in my day job a lot to do with industrial design, so you could say it's the same team. This is the, the iPod U2 edition, which is maybe 10 years old. And they match like two cousins. Talking of Apple and uh, design, this is the black watch of Sinclair. And also when you look at the package design with this black, white, and red, you feel like it's an early iPhone. The iPhone 3 had the same color scheme for the packaging. And who, who remembers the first iPhone when you opened the box, like the packaging was really nice, but Sinclair did it uh, 40 years ago, this is, I don't know how the material is, is uh, being told in English. Velvet. velvet, yes, velvet. Velvet with a silver border and here it's silk inside and then you take the product out. So give you a better view. It's really gorgeous. Okay, problem with this uh, clock, uh, it's not working anymore. Yeah. Uh, John Cleese uh, used to say, this parrot is dead, it's really dead, I opened it and all their <laughs> electronics are gone by, you know, they, they are no more, <laughs> dead. <laughs> okay. So th those were the early days and then came Sinclair Research. And uh, I will have a computer here. Let's see if I have something in the box, no. This is a ZX81, and one would think it's a regular one sold in millions, but this is a special unit. And uh, that's why I'm here to tell you there's a Sinclair story out of the UK. You know, in Europe and all over the world, the Sinclair standing was different. It was not that household name. It was a name under, uh, under many, Commodore, Atari, Amstrad, Schneider were selling more computers, but Sinclair had a, a quite a good standing, and I don't know how, but when you bought an Audi some months in a year, you got the free present, a ZX81, with an engraved Audi logo as a present. And I think Jim would like this, never seen before. This is really special, and you see the warranty seals are in German like Achtung. <laughs> uh, and also the Sinclair guarantee, you know we write it differently at the end. It's the warranty sticker. And uh, it's a nice unit. It's the only one I have ever seen and I'm still looking for the advertisement material from Audi but it's hard to find 40 years after the launch. For me, the whole thing with the 81 started uh, differently. 
It started by mail over. We had a, a German company in Munich called uh, Jürgen Schumpich. He was the company importing the Sinclair goods to Germany for many years. And by mail order, when I was about 13 years old, I bought uh, 81. And those are the original prints I had uh, in my parents' house, where I opened the box. And li like it's an unboxing on YouTube, they do it diff <laughs> the same. So I invented YouTube unboxing. <laughs> And this is my grandfather's uh, workbench where I soldered this uh, 81 computer. I was still at secondary school, no soldering experience. I did some light shows for the discotheques in the school, but not more. Never with uh, integrated circuits. The thing worked at the end. And you cannot imagine what that meant for my professional life. So I built my own computer. That's really... Great memories. OK, where to continue? Uh, I have a folder with all the original press releases of Sinclair Research. They are, were given to me on a loan from Bill Nichols, the marketing director of Sinclair Research. Pr I promised him to scan all of them and make them public. But you know. Uh, job as a COO in an international company, family, different hobbies. Time is endless, but at least I'm sharing it with you. So I, I did not find this anywhere, not on World of Sync, nowhere, because they were not giving to the users, they were only giving to press. So this is really the press information, which when you read it, uh, you get tears, you know what they... It, it, it matches with what the, the, the brothers said before. The gaming is not in the press release. And there were additional sheets about technical information, and even the tiniest speck were glorified. That's the nice thing about the 80s. And uh, then there was a software announcement the same day, and we know all about those software announcements. Until you get the software, it takes some time like a biorhythmic program or a calculator, database. Okay, you see a flight simulation and backgammon. Okay, halfway. No proper games. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's not proper <laughs> games. That's leisure and uh, to strengthen your mind. Then came the spectrum. And uh, from the spectrum decade, I have a, an envelope with the... The stamps signed by Clive, those you can easily get on eBay, there are quite a few. But for me, this is special because it's the 1982 uh, information technology year. Then again from Tedeschi's, and I missed the important one, is the original photograph at the launch. And uh, you see Clive. And not sure if this is John Matthiessen, most likely. Yes, it is. And uh, really with a big smile. And he did a huge career in the US later. He was one of the designers of that Atari Jaguar. Now works for NVIDIA in the tech department as a mid-tier manager. And other nice pictures like uh, here, the UK residents must help me. Who's that guy? Macmillan, okay. Prime Minister of about 57. Yeah, yeah. This is really a picture, and this is the original print. Maybe there are some copies and some scans, but I can do a 2400 DPI high res black and white uh, scan, and then it's preserved. Assuming it's on the right server and it's backup, then the backup has been tested. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you know. The, the Oliver Twins did a good thing with their childhood memories like Terminator or Star Wars and stuff. Same true for Swiss Kids, but one in addition, James Bond. You know, that was a hero. And so this brochure with the flat screen TV and the British passport, this is somehow iconic. And uh, I have the TV here. You can get it for 10 bucks on eBay. But this is not the same model as you can buy. 
This is the international model. And you clearly can see that here you have an empty spot below the LCD. And this one has a band selector here. I never have seen another one in physical existence. And it took me more than 10 years to get one. I search every single eBay auction, look at the pictures. If there's no picture, send them a question. And in the end, I could get it for the same amount of money. And this one is nice because it still has the battery inside. And that was the problem yesterday at the security check. Because, you know, kids talking about lithium and Tesla and iPhone. Sinclair did it 40 years ago. OK, the truth was you could watch maybe half an hour. And then it had to go in trash, and maybe not in the regular trash, but in the industrial one. So this unit also, most units you buy nowadays are not working. But at least they are great as a, as a design icon for your shelf. And uh, this is the TV story. OK, I must organize myself a little bit, otherwise not enough space. Um forgot to show you this one. It's a spectrum. It's not that special. We have one in the museum. Maybe, and it has the, the regular keys, I, I assume. It's not the, not the gray keys. But it has an extremely low serial number. Uh, let's see if it can. 745. Also a lucky found on eBay not many years ago from Andrew, Andrew Blood sold this for 20. So I don't know what the other collectors do, but I invest, have good searches, permanent searches, and uh, some of my spare time is to scan eBay if there is a good find. Um, only 16K, right? This is only the 16K version. <laughs> and it's in pristine, in, internal, it's like new. Outside, it's not that nice, but it's really a very nice unit. And uh, it's definitely on one of my shelves. I have a lot of spectrums, maybe 20. That's the only one on display. Good. Then there was a, OK. There's, a, again, bubbles inside is a, out of the production band of the ZX uh, Spectrum Microdrive production. The PCB is still uncut and still not soldered. Even an edge is broken off here. You see the cables there. A few years ago, there were some of those samples also on eBay, and some went pretty high, too high for me. But this one was uh, available also. I think below 50. And it's really nice to, to have a unit like that. OK, it's a Spectrum event, but uh, there is not only the, the Spectrum. There is other computers from the ZX range. And this looks like uh, a mess. So you see there are some chips hanging. No expansion port. Somebody was with uh, really with a tool. He took it off. But the point, this is not the Sinclair QL motherboard. This is a Sinclair ZX83 motherboard. So all those rumors, like there was no existing prototype. We can uh, negotiate on the word working prototype. But at least there were prototypes. And with a good production uh, documentation, week 50, 1983. So this was three or four weeks before the launch event in the Intercontinental in London. And you see it's really nice, Sinclair ZX83. And also on the back. And even the expansion port has been taken off there would be the possibility to bring life back to this one. Just uh, 
make some missing links at the end and make, uh, but I'm not electronics, you know. I can fix something simple like a capacitor, but not a complete board. And I got this from uh, Tony Fierschman, who did a lot of Sinclair repairs, and he got one time a lot of Sinclair parts from a guy in London near Feltham, who had connection to the Torn EMI data tech where the whole thing was produced. And most likely this was not coming from Cambridge, from Sinclair's offices, but even from London's office or from Torn EMI. And the uh, picture I like very much is Clive with the QL. Uh, I own video footage of that event, but it's protected by copyright, so I cannot put it on my YouTube channel. I do some tricks like showing it in the back and filming myself, and then you have a 10 seconds glimpse. That's all the risk I take on me. That's, uh, otherwise, it's uh, not healthy for my money. <laughs> okay. Then came the Spectrum Plus, and, uh, oh, should, yeah, we take the Spectrum Plus, it's good. I have a Spectrum Plus with me, and uh, this is now the bad thing, because it came out of the, uh, the airport, it's fixable. It's not a real computer, it's a model. And you see it because the keys fell off and the keys, oops. Okay, keys fell off. There is no keyboard logic. So basically it's two pieces of hand molded plastic with some keys glued on. And you see it, you see other differences. If I remember well, the, the ZX Spectrum Plus normally is in red. This one is in white. <laughs> yeah, oh, and on the back you see where you have the, the stands, a hole. And, uh, but all the screws are there, you know, even in front, hardly seeable. The openings are there. And from the back, power, expansion bus, the connection, everything is there. Has it actually got a board inside it? Uh, <laughs> Screwdriver. <laughs> this came from Tedeschi's collection. The winning offer was 622 pound plus postage plus Swiss custom, plus Swiss VAT. In the end, it cost in pounds about 800. I did not tell my wife. <laughs> 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 but I think it's worth it, because when you open it, oh. it's really, it's, it's, it's beautiful. It's handmade model. And you see the plastic is white. And with this triangle, you see that there was a metal triangle somewhere where they put it on and sprayed it. And I don't know why. I think the space was big enough for the motherboard, but they cut it in two pieces and only mounted the back part of it, which was good enough that each fo all photographs will catch it yeah. enough. You don't have uh, photographs which look too much in the inside. And uh, the top part of it is also, it's quite heavy. It's much heavier than the original uh, plastic case. And you see the same thing where they sprayed. I have a video on YouTube already of the unboxing, but it's not uh, under that name because the same day I get the next station prototype from the US. And this came first in the unboxing. But before the event, I did another video which goes online in a couple of time. First need to fix the keys in the end. And for me also first time, they, those look like real keys. So they had already the keys, but not the real ones, because when you look, the character size is uh, different. 
even you know you all are all spec key uh, guys you know that there is where it's the in key you see the in key normally you have the e if here they had a different writing and the, the characters like the n is much bigger than on the original one so this is really a, a nice piece Good, uh, it's empty. <laughs> what uh, else we have to tell? Um, yeah, I do the QL. That's the QL. You have one on display, uh, which is the UK version. I checked with the museum on the website. They have a US version, but this is the German version. And uh, from the top, you see the, the different uh, characters, like the umlauts. Mm -hmm. So this is maybe not the, the biggest difference. But when you turn it on, you know, I, I will write the book one day, the Sinclair story or the QL story. There are two fundamental mistakes which uh, were the reason why the QL failed internationally. One were those PT plugs, off standard as hell. But for the German and American markets, they did it right. And the DSOP is what was standard and uh, what works. And even the joystick ports are compatible with uh, Atari and Commodore and the serial. You can take a, a serial cable of today. It still works. I think only the handshaking was on a different place. And uh, you know, looking back is not the right thing to say in tears how life could be or the world. but. Sinclair found a very powerful uh, manufacturer for the QL. It was, uh, David Carlin once told me that that was one of the first OEM, ODM deals for Samsung. They worked for Apple before, but, and think when, when everything would have been going the right direction, Sinclair could be huge today. They had early connector with Samsung. There were Spectrums made there, Spectrum Plus and uh, QL for Germany and US. And this QL is about one kilogram heavier than the UK version. Uh, I invite everyone to try afterwards. The reason why Samsung had to step in and not turn EMI were the regulations. You know, nowadays we have CE, but mid 80s, there was nothing, in, and in the UK, I assume there was really nothing. So a ZX81, you could put your radio beside and you can listen to the CPU. That was by law not allowed in Germany and the US. The US already had FCC, and the Germans had uh, um, VDE and other regulations like RF and EMC. And the point is, and I need to open this one, that internally the QL is completely different. It's, it's completely different from the UK made QLs and it's different from all the spectrum you have ever opened. Because it has a silver sprayed plastic case to uh, reduce or uh, eliminate the RF. You, can you see it? And, and the keyboard backplate is of, of real steel, not aluminium. And all the connection between case and metal parts were with, uh, with metal, so that the RF part was much reduced. Even on the modulator, you see a, a bentable metal piece, which on the top goes to a contact plate and you see all the chips with uh, capacitors on it and diodes. Early versions even had a piggyback board here. And when you talk about uh, PCB issues, the one known in the service manual, there were at least seven more for US and German. Sometimes for every few hundred units, they made a modification. And very late German QLs, not that one, they even would have different uh, connectors on the motherboard for the microdrives, connectors like on a standard floppy disk. So Sinclair really had a learning curve in the QL, but it was all too late. 
And the uh, small mistake of the QL was also one of the 10 mistakes we've killed it, were the bad feet on the ground which felt off. The international one were differently. They could not change the whole design, you know, because of space, but they are lockable on the case. So it's really a, a different piece of computer. And, uh, okay, the bad thing is Amstrad axed it almost exactly the day they bought over. They continued the spectrum, but even the open orders in uh, Korea were not fulfilled. There were one time that there secured information about 3,000 unfinished QLs in Korea, which never left the country. I assume they were dumped one day. Okay, I hurry up. Uh, next came the Spectrum 128. And I will not continue with the papers, but you see that I really have some gems like Sinclair Bulta or the Willis Road Times, or there's even nice for, uh, for Jeff what happened at Milton, I think, internal and external publication. So I need a really good scan job on that one. And the uh, second last item I will show you is this one. It's also not looking special. It's a regular Spectrum 128. But when you turn it on, there's something special. There is a label on it which is in German and has to do with RF, radio frequency. And uh, you see a second sticker from the factory Oh, it's hard to get the focus. Okay. Okay, I will read it. 3301. The UK version was 3300 when you have a sticker. But still made with the same serial numbers, made by AB Electronics in Wales. And the big difference is in the inside. So, similar to the QL made by Samsung, for some reason Sinclair decided that the uh, the Spectrum 128, which was a year later, uh, was made in the UK, in Wales, but with the same technology, like silver spray inside, metal plate for the keyboard. And um, I have two of those units. Inside, again, silver sp spray. And the big difference, the RS-232 is a D-sub. I asked Sean B, he's a big collector from Germany about that. He said, never have seen, so I knew my units are very unique. And when you look at the motherboard version, it's a version 9. I think it's first time showed in the UK now, version 9. Date code 8612. And behind the 9, there's another character. I, I thought it's a, a C. But to be sure, and I have not seen this until last week, but I wanted to know. Give me a hand. And first time I took a screwdriver and removed the two screws and saw, saw that it's a version 9G for German. Even the keyboard layout and the ROM is English. The technology fits German regulations. And you see that the case really has uh, some kind of shielding inside. And it's, uh, I don't know how many were made, but the special thing was when Amstrad took the plug from the QL, they continued with the 128. And I'm not, I'm not sure what's written in the Amstrad story is fully correct because they had not to re-engineer it for the plus two. They had a fully working machines for nine months from Spain and the UK, and they immediately shifted. So this one has an Amstrad chip week 20, which is a few, only a couple of weeks after the, the takeover. So they continued to commission at AB, ordered in 10,000 Spectrum 128 until the silver version was ready. Okay. 
pool. Almost an hour. So that's the Sinclair story. And um, now the point is, I was never really good in gaming. I was better in programming. That's why I choose the QL to be my computer. Even nowadays, it's true when I play a game and I think I'm really good. My son does it for a day, and he has better high score. <laughs> and uh, I'm, I'm quite a name in the QL scene and running there uh, several things, including I'm writing uh, the software environment, the runtime. You think like a Linux Live edition for the QL for all platforms. And for that, that, I do beta testing and integration. And this is the next QL. It's a FPGA-based machine like the ZX Spectrum Next. It's uh, developed in Germany. And it will be manufactured by uh, one of my colleagues in the UK. We get the first batch of 20 in the beginning of November with blue PCBs. This is... Uh, one of the few existing prototypes, the machine name is Q68. And uh, that's where I spent most of my uh, retro computing time. So wanted to show this and make a good link to the Spectrum Next uh, discussions, which will go on today. OK, that's it. Thank you. So thank you, Urs. Uh, <clears throat> that was very entertaining. I can imagine now everybody wants to check on eBay. Maybe if uh, maybe, <laughs> maybe you find something rare, but uh, I think no chance. He already have his well, times, are, everywhere. times are gone. Times are mostly gone. The good things are gone, and people don't give it on the market uh, again. Don't take them now. Their <laughs> dreams, you know. Um, <laughs> it's to protect my <laughs> purchasing. <laughs>